Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Northlands National Park. We have quite a bit to do today. We are turning this empty expanse of land into something really cool, really interesting and probably the most detailed build I've done. We're going to start with the hillside walk, the hiking trail or whatever we want to call it on the left there where you can see those guests going halfway up. Over on the right hand side you may have noticed there's a tunnel dug out through the hillside that goes to our new staff area, more on that later, and then this empty hill in the middle is going to become our new doll sheep habitat. There was a lot to do here, I've come up with a few new methods to deliver the content to you, so we're turning this into this. Look at that! Be really excited to bring this one to you guys. We're going to start with some of the simpler stuff like the hillside trail and the new staff area. So without further ado, let us dive into the speed build and I'll show you exactly what we did and how we did it. One of the things that I want to talk about is I've been looking for new ways to deliver some of the more boring parts of the content to you, like the rock building and things like that and a little bit of the tree lining. That often do take me a long time and when we then get them kind of fleshed out into the video they can take up like five minutes still, even as a speed build. So for this first part of the build you're going to see something a little bit different. That's just going to be me using the undo tool and uh, making things just pop into position because you know the techniques that I use to make my rock work and my tree lining and stuff and we are going to see a little bit of that later on in the video anyway so I don't want to fill these things up with too much of that development so here we are on our hillside trail and watch as the terrain just pops into position we put some nice trees in but it was all just simple using our tundra rocks and some law friendly trees just to make everything blend in nicely and here we are guests walking along we do have a little bit of a problem you, the doll sheep habitat at this point in the video was already put in place and you can see there are guests stacking up there to look into that habitat but there are no doll sheep there at the moment so they can't see anything and I don't know what they're pointing at. <laughs> Anyway, back around to our staff area. This is us just finishing off that path. I didn't want to show you the underground portion of things, but you will see me decorating that little mine side area in place. And it was just a case of matching up this staff path like I said I was going to do. I did try and run it directly down the side of the hill, but then I actually thought it actually might be a little bit better if we can have it cut through that mountainside so it comes out the back of this building. There also wasn't a lot of space between the station and the new part of the build. So here we are, just popping in our new staff area, glass fronted walls, keeping that industrial theme going all the way through, and then a little bit more wooden mesh on the other side of it so that when you come round that corner, you have this natural progression from the ironwork building right into that natural mine site. So we're kind of going with this idea now that there are a lot of mines around this early portion of the build. Something I think is really cool and I've taken a lot of inspiration from a guy who has moved into an old mining town. Uh, you can follow him on YouTube and see what he's done. He's been living there for about two years now and uh, it was an old uh, silver mine. Was it a silver mine? It may have been a silver mine. I can't remember. But it's really cool, he's basically spent all of his life savings, he's going up there, he's trying to restore this old town, and I've been following his videos for quite a while now, uh, I would give him a shout out, but I, the name, I'm really, unfortunately it's completely escaped me, but uh, if you do get a chance and if you are into that sort of thing, uh, I would recommend watching it, I will put a link in the description uh, if I remember to, <laughs> but yeah, you may know him already. But he's uh, built up quite a following and uh, he's getting a lot of help out there and the area that he's living in in america is i just found it fascinating and he goes down these old mines and does explores and stuff and he's looking for a pair of well-preserved levi's jeans from the original era and i just yeah it was really cool so anyway we are doing this kind of exit around this side of the mine and putting in a little bit of rock work just to add some support and a little bit of a texture change between the landscaped terrain and my own personal rock work and building and it was a little bit difficult uh, we kind of ended up with this like weird void in between the two pieces and i wasn't quite sure how to fill it in and in the end we ended up just doing a nice little layer of rocks fleshing that out a little bit more adding a little bit of detail in there to make sure that it didn't look like the same textures were being reused and recycled very much the same way that i normally build my rocks then we put in some trees and some foliage and bushes just to cover up any imperfections and yeah really nice really quick and easy to do I had a couple of issues in working out how I was actually going to fit the whole build together and what 
little decorations and stuff we would do and I do miss a little bit of lighting up but I will come back and finish that off camera in another time in prep for our next episode. So what I wanted to do was really highlight that mine exit and then it wasn't too bad that the actual staff path going down wasn't well lit or there wasn't much attention drawn to it but I had an idea to again we're going to be using mesh quite a little uh, quite a lot in this build in general just because I think it would work really well uh, mainly as a barrier for any kind of rocks that come loose to hold that in. You see this on the side of motorways and things where they, they'll put like a, a huge mesh barrier in and it's basically to catch any uh, large chunks of dirt or trees or something that kind of get ripped up or rocks and boulders and stuff that fall down. The mesh will catch the larger pieces and stop them going onto the road. So I'm going with that idea. Here we just put in a little bit of a frame as it comes out of this side of the mine and it was just using the temple stone support, some of our huge logs and some smaller logs to act as an extra support barrier. On the roof we end up using corrugated iron again because it lends itself really well to that industrialized theme that I'm going for as well as the upcycling and recycling theme that I want to continue throughout this build. So a lot of the same materials being used and it's just the case of adding in pops of colour uh, lighting wise or using other materials just to make sure that there's something to stand out and it doesn't look all boring. One of the great things about this video when I'm building you're going to see we have a thaw, we finally get a summer where all of the snow melts and it gives you a nice kind of exploratory look at what's going on and how things look when they're not covered in snow and it also gave me a really nice opportunity to work a little bit more in depth with that sort of tool set and see where things may look a little bit wrong. So that was also fun to do. Just to mix things up and add a little bit of a variation, I mixed the usual wooden logs that I use with the Australia wood logs because they offer a nice texture that contrasts well with the stone colour of the supports but also gives us enough of a difference in variation to make things stand out still. We carried this on all the way around until it got to the mine entrance and then it was just a simple case of lining everything up properly and what I wanted to do, I pulled these supports along so they matched up with the path really well. You can see here as well from the preview we did where we built the flooring and everything back in place, that hasn't been done yet in this video. Uh, there are a couple of time jumps where you'll see things getting put in place because I did them after the video in, in a way to cut out a lot of the more intense building that took me quite a while. I don't think they kind of add anything to the video which is why I'm looking at different methods of delivering that sort of that part of the video to you guys and that's why I liked using that undo tool just to fill in a couple of blanks in the building process because I do want to show all of it to you but in total this build ended up being at about nine and a half to ten hours so it did take a long time and when I pulled it all down to the speed build I was still left with about an hour's worth of content and I didn't really want to split this across two videos I wanted to make sure I fit it all into one and kept it below the 40 minute mark because I think that's kind of where things get a little bit boring and a little bit tedious so parts of the build where I'm doing the same thing quite often we will start cutting them out and I will start using that method a little bit more because I think it was really cool and it's just a nice way to see how a build has developed if I can and I do remember to do this actually what I'd probably do is do that while I'm actually recording so that you can see the steps that I take that's one of the things that I don't like about this first test of the new method is you don't see the steps so you don't see me put the rock work in first you don't then see me build and build and build you just see bits of it being made in sequence uh, because all I was doing was deleting small chunks of it and then bringing them back into place using the undo tool with my UI switched off and the camera recording. So yeah, anyway, back to the build. Let's talk a little bit more about this. So this one was a little bit difficult. You can see I'm, I'm going through a number of different changes and different variations on how I want to do things to it. And I, it, nothing really quite sat right with how it was going. But the overall outcome I'm pretty happy with. We put in some of these string lights with one of them hidden in the middle of the pillars and then we were able to join that up. So here we are putting in our foliage and our rocks and then putting in the basic foundations adding in some logs getting in the mine exit and then finishing it off so as you can see as it gets down onto that curved portion of the path we lose all of the supports because we don't really need them uh, they're well kind of protected by the rocks that are kind of jutting out onto that and the staff use it perfectly it's getting exactly what I want out of it which I'm really happy with for something very simple and that didn't actually take me a lot of time 
Now we move on to our doll sheep habitat and this goes through a few different changes. What I wanted at first was to have the track for the funicular running through the habitat itself. So I was trying to make a wall that would encase the track but allow the use of gates and things to open and close as the carts coming round and that would then stop the sheep from escaping. Unfortunately it didn't work out like that. But I did leave a lot of the stuff in. I'm going to move on and talk about the waterfall and then we'll move back to talking about how we adjusted the habitat. I wanted three really big status pieces in this build. It is far larger than the minimum required area for the doll sheep because I want to show and display their natural behaviours. I think in total this is about five and a half thousand square foot. It is massive and they only require about 442 square foot for one doll sheep. But I would like to increase the population here. They're pretty low maintenance and they look really cool and it's nice to see them using the terrain and climbing around and being quite high up and then coming back down. So I wanted to make sure there were three big statement pieces within this build. Here we are building our waterfall and it was really nice to really get the grips and experiment with these water tools. So I wanted to put in a nice big pool here from that first waterfall and what we would do is we'd then create a uh, a goat track type thing so a little bit of rocks uneven terrain so that they the, can jump up and get to this watering hole that's far up but also away from the guests and it's a little bit more private and we're going to try and attract them up here with some of the scent markers now I just wanted to fill in the rocks here because I had a little bit of a problem reducing that glass barrier and we just need to see how that kind of evens out. The other thing that I hadn't really thought about was what happens if this gets damaged. Now it shouldn't get damaged, but it may deteriorate over time. And as this barrier isn't actually part of a habitat, I'm not sure how a mechanic would be able to access it. But we'll see how that goes. And what I could always do is run a null barrier from our existing null barrier up to the glass. And then the mechanic should actually just repair one side of a wall somewhere and that would then repair the glass in tow. They don't actually go around to every barrier and hammer it to repair it. As long as they get on one, it generally repairs the rest of them as they go through the motions of repairing. So stepping it up in here, we're just putting in a few more water features. I did play around with some of the variations on the angles of these, but nothing really stuck. So what I then decided to do was put in a few more rocks to create a slope going down that merged with the water features below. You can see we've lost our snow, everything looking a little bit more sparse and uncovered and you can kind of see what's going on beneath that blanket of snow that's usually covering things. But it was really fun to play with. So anyway, what we did was we put in a few more rocks and then we used some of the special effects features to create the illusion of water moving down those rocks and then it was just a case of finishing off our top waterfalls and making sure there was enough space between both of the special effects barriers but also that those water effects were covering the rocks to give that illusion of water traveling all the way down and here we are putting it all into place step by step so we did start at the top here throwing down our main waterfall there it goes in place and then the next lock covering the barriers themselves more coming down and into the pool at the bottom and there we are I, I just I'm amazed at how well this turned out there was a lot of work in here and I would have loved to have shown you more but it was very similar like a lot of the stuff that was going on was just micro adjustments making sure things fit playing around with water features and then getting everything into place so we're going to move around to the next part of the build and the next statement piece that I want to use in it and we're just running down some rocks to create our path up to that water hole and what we're going to be doing is putting in a collapsed mine that's going to act as a sleeping quarters for our doll sheep and I wanted to make this really I just thought it was a really cool idea uh, it gives them a little bit of a more natural sleeping spot as opposed to building a shed or a stable or a barn of some sort for them. I still do that. I haven't shown it in the video, but you do see it in the final showcase because I think it's important, but it was just really simple. Very similar to the macaque um, building that we put in place. And it just didn't really add anything to the video. So I took it out because this is probably the one that I want to show you guys because it's the one I'm more proud of. And I think it really fits in with the theme that I'm going for for this area. So all I did was 
carve out using the chisel tool and then a flattened foundation just to finish it all off and then we started building in some little rocks and things and I wanted to carry this all the way around to the back and then build up this huge stack of like mangled wood and old uh, dynamite boxes they're not dynamite they're boxes of tea but we're going to pretend they're dynamite boxes for the purpose of this video but they're all discarded and you know they've been left behind by whatever mining operation was going on back here and build that in with some rocks and stuff just to make sure that it was all fleshed out you can see the edge of the barrier for the habitat but i do move that around quite a lot in this video and here we're just putting in a load of random rocks just to really give that feel that at some point the mine here completely collapsed and is now disused and abandoned but we do fill it out with a few different bits and pieces now i'm going to talk again about the original barrier for this habitat because it did move and you see us moving some of it around later on in this part of the video so basically there was no way to enclose this without causing some sort of clipping issue for the train where it just merges through a wall and comes through so i did end up moving the wall to the other side of the track so that it no longer goes through the habitat but there is enough clearance and enough uh, of a sight line on the barriers so that guests can still get a good view in here into the mine entrance the abandoned mine should i say and see a lot of the doll sheep and everything that's going on in there i would have loved to have been able to do it, but i think because i messed around with some of the collisions the gates now no longer work on this funicular so i can't get them to line up properly so that the gates open as a train carriage approaches and that is a bit of a shame but I'm still really happy with the outcome and it's only something minor and I'm sure later on in this zoo we'll be able to do a few different bits and pieces so that we have these drive through habitats in action for everybody to see. So we've done our basic stonework here, I'm just dotting around and just making sure that everything kind of fits in nicely and then again very much like we did for that staff entrance we're just creating a nice mine support beam to finish this one off and give it a nice clean entrance we do add in a lot of little props and stuff here like i said i wanted to use those uh, boxes of tea to resemble dynamite boxes and dynamite crates and stuff or something that has been left behind we buried a lot of them into the habitat itself and you will see that a little bit later on and i just i really like the feel of this one and i was impressed by it and uh, really proud of the work that i'd gone into it uh, again it was another um, another bit of an experimentation with rocks and stuff so I was really happy to come up with something a little bit different and something that also really emphasizes the the area that we're in and I had a lot of fun doing it it did take a lot of time but I think that's one of the things that I love most about planet zoo you could spend hours and hours on something and I like to push myself every time I make a video or every time I move into a new habitat and do something different. And as long as it kind of fits in with the flow of the overall theme of the zoo, I'm going to be happy with how things turn out. So there's a lot of stop starty here where I'm just thinking about stuff and how I want to manoeuvre things around. Because sometimes it just really helps to just sit back and look at something for a little bit. It gives you that opportunity to plan further parts of the build and here we are just putting in some wood just jutting out of the rock as if this is completely like a foundation pillar has collapsed under the stress or the weight of something and the whole thing is caved in and we've unfortunately not been able to clear it out so it's just kind of been left exposed and it was just a nice way to create something natural for the sheep to come into and and use as a shelter rather than creating like i said earlier on an artificial barn which i think is all fair and well and i i really like that use but sometimes it just feels really nice to mix things up a little bit and, and offer something a little bit different and i'm pretty sure builds in the future i'm going to revert back to something of a stable or a barn type thing but i thought it would be really nice to just go all out and you may have noticed uh, we have taken out another fifty thousand dollar loan to facilitate this build because it cost a lot of money <laughs> So we're putting in a sign here just to warn people off going into the collapsed mine. Played around with a few of the fonts and stuff. I did try to... I really like these signs, but what annoys me about them is you can only type on one line, which is the top, and it doesn't always work. So I tried attaching another sign to it, but a lot of them 
when you place this one, which I thought would be really cool, it lights up and I don't want it to light up. I just want it to look like this has been painted, hand painted on by someone to ward people off going in. I tried multiple different options for this and I couldn't really settle on something. I wanted it to say danger, collapsed mine, do not enter or something or danger, no entry, collapsed mine. And what I ended up with doing was just getting rid of any sort of signage, putting collapsed mine on and then we added a few of the guest signs, the like no entry guest signs on there just to finish it off. And I think it adds enough and I thought it looked really cool and it was just a nice sort of finishing touch to it. We threw down some wheelbarrows and filled them with sacks, had one tipped over, put in a few rocks to decorate the underside of it as if they'd been previously carrying ore or something that has now been spilled out onto the floor. And <laughs> one of the things that I then thought about was, actually this has probably been abandoned for a long time, why has nobody come and cleaned all of this crap up? But never mind, <laughs> I, I like it how it is. We'll pretend that a zookeeper is particularly artsy. I was going to put that tent down, but we'll ignore that for now because it does come back a bit later on in our third and final highlight point of the video. Again, I brought in some plaster just to use as a base for my next part of the video because I needed to create a fence here running along from the mine. This was originally when everything was still part of the same sort of thing and I was trying to use this as a drive-through habitat and I could realistically take this fence out but I don't really want to for now I think it it finishes off this um, key point very well and it separates it from the waterfall which I not necessarily is a good thing but I think it gives us this f definition on a scene so this is your mine scene. If you want to come and have a look here, you're seeing this abandoned mine. If you want to go have a look at the waterfall, you are somewhere else. And I just think it's important sometimes to break up things rather than having everything as part of one concrete structure, if that makes sense. I also experimented with a lot of terrain painting here. Uh, not having the snow really gave me an opportunity to do that. And I learned a lot and I had a lot of fun creating and playing around with that using different opacities on the levels of terrain painting that we're doing. That was something fun to do. The last thing I wanted to do just to really add a couple of finishing touches here was put in an, an old minecart track that had kind of been buried by debris and stuff just so that there's a little bit of it poking out enough for people to go, oh, okay, so the mine used to go into the, the mine carts would be attached here and go into the tunnel. And you also saw us putting in our tea crates there just to really finish everything off. Last thing to do was to merge this uh, goat track into the rest of the scenery by linking it up with some rocks. And now you can probably see why I did a different format for delivering the content to you because once again, this is probably the third bit of rock work that I've done in this video and I don't want it to be the same thing every time. But to talk about some of my tips for making your rocks sit nicely together, start with big, get down small. That's how it should go. So even if you're using the same big rock time and time again, Make sure you add like a little rotation in it every time just to break up the monotony a little bit. Get your basic foundation in with those larger pieces. Move on to your smaller pieces as you go down. And then if you feel like it still looks a little bit too samey, add in even smaller pieces or play around with the cladding. Just to really add a little bit of a differential between the pieces that you're using and making sure that it doesn't look too repetitive and uniform i guess we don't want uniformity with our rocks because that's not how they work you don't no two rocks are the same i guess <laughs> but yeah that's that's my main tip for the for, for that and you can always use more rocks than you think you're going to need or more rocks than are necessary because at the end of the day what you want to do is create something that looks really natural and you're not going to get that if you're just slapping down three or four rocks here and there that are a massive size and just going right i'm done with it I wanted to create something that was a natural stepping stone for the doll sheep here so that they could navigate their way up the side of this mountain and get to the watering hole and it it's a quite a slim margin that they've got for movement but it does work they do get all the way up to the top and after a little bit of time playing around with them i didn't need to make a few adjustments just to make sure that the path was complete but when we got there it only took a little bit of time for them to get up there 
and the way that we've driven them up there is by putting some enrichment at the top. There's a couple of herb scent markers up there. I've not seen them drink water out of that pool yet and I don't know if that's because they can't get down to it but it's at least there and there is that option. I did end up having to put in a water pump because they were getting thirsty and that just made me think that maybe they don't quite have the ability to access that water. Even though when I bring up the area of movement that they have it says that they can actually jump into that water and swim. So a little bit strange, maybe they can swim in it but they can't actually walk down to the water's edge to drink from it. But we expanded the barrier for the habitat so that they can now go to the other pool that's at the end of the large waterfall and drink from there. Finally to finish this one off it was about putting in some foliage. I really like these mosses and I've been looking for a way to use them and integrate them into a habitat for quite some time and it was really nice to finally be able to do that and use these because I think they just had a really nice bit of colour differentiation in between these rocks and once again my other tip for rock work is use foliage if you are struggling. If you've got something that just looks like the joint isn't quite working but it leads well into another part of your habitat, leave it, put in some foliage, I guarantee it'll probably finish things off nicely. Put in a bit of moss or even sink some of these polyepolis trees down into the ground. I did use these and then discovered that um, the doll sheep don't like them. They're not from their continent, which is frustrating. But there is another North American similar version of this tree that you can sink down into the ground. I can't quite remember what it's called. Another thing that I ended up getting criticized for by guests at the end of this video when they were exploring was that there was too much foliage and too many plants here. So uh, we do end up taking a few out, which I was a little disappointed at, but I do think there was a little bit of overkill when it came to the foliage in here. And I did manage to take out enough that it satisfied the guests and the animals and also meant that the build didn't suffer too much for it. The other thing I could have done though is reduce the barrier size and add in some other natural barriers to finish that off and then I could still use the foliage to decorate things but I didn't want to do that, I quite like the size of the habitat. You can see again the barrier is still there but it does end up getting moved and I will explain to you where the final barrier is. In fact you'll see it because we put a fence around most of it to stop the doll sheep jumping to freedom. We're just Sitting back to have a little look before we move on to finish off these final touches on the rocks going up the side just to make sure that it merges into the terrain nicely and there are no issues with the rest of the build. Obviously I don't like leaving gaps so I like to fill everything in as best I can and I think that's also really important because it just makes everything seem natural and like it's supposed to be there. And I think that's what's important when you're creating these sort of habitats and actually developing a zoo in general. Gaps are a little bit weird, uh, they shouldn't be there, so fill them, fill them with something, anything, a foliage, a prop, whatever makes it work. And again, going back to terrain painting, I wanted to make a dirt trail going all the way up this side of the hill because my next statement piece is going to involve creating a lookout post or a research post because I think um, I'm going to explain that a little bit later and I'll tell you why I went through this process but I think you'll be happy with it and I certainly was and I really like the kind of idea and the backstory behind it. So we're just going to have a little snapshot and watch this mine being put in place as our trail goes in and then the mine itself takes shape. Looking really cool. I'm really really happy with this. I think it looks... Uh, I'm just... I don't mean to pat myself on the back or toot my own horn or whatever but I'm just like when I go back to those original builds that I did the development and my own kind of journey as a builder in this game and where it's taken me to I never really imagined that I would end up getting this to this stage of the game I thought I'd still be building little blocks and stuff so it just kind of goes to show what you can do when you get a little bit inspired and and take a little bit of initiative to learn the game yourself and this has probably been one of my favorite builds like ever that I've done and uh, certainly this and the macaque habitat um, to work in the way that I've done to create those I'm really pleased with and I hope you guys like them too and at the end of the day the, the reason that these are put out is for your enjoyment not just mine <laughs> but I enjoy them and I hope you do as well <laughs> so if you did uh, make sure like you know share the video tell a friend who likes the game as well I hope I do provide some entertainment and some tips and we're going back now to our top side. So I used plaster to create a basic foundation for this. 
And then I used some of the Asian planks because they've got some really nice kind of like 1x4 meter planks here and they can be made into a nice floor. I just thought it looked cool. It was basic. I would played around a little bit with these because I wasn't really sure how I wanted this to develop but I knew I wanted some sort of lookout or an outpost at the top of this hill. And then I had an idea. Why don't we create some sort of research campground for people who want to come and spend some time in the natural habitat of the doll sheep or whatever animal happens to be in here and they can use it to keep a safe distance from the animals not interfere with their day-to-day -day kind of goings on but observe them from afar and be able to make notes and stuff and stay at this campground overnight and observe their habitats 24 7. and then it reminded me of uh, the film <laughs> Walter Mitty and the remake, the Ben Stiller remake. And in it, Sean Penn plays a photographer working for Time Life magazine, and he is spending time searching for a Siberian tiger in its natural habitat. So then I thought, why don't we just make this a photography hide of some description? So there's a tent at the top, there's a jeep that, you know, you can drive up and down the hill or what have you. And I thought, right, okay, let's run with this. Let's make something that's a... Uh, a little bit industrialized has like a little bit of storage and things and then the tent and then like a little water trough or something like a well so that you can get your own water you don't have to keep going up and down and and this is kind of how it all developed and and what we made i think was pretty simple we used iron girders because i thought again keep that industrialization theme going put in some mesh uh, just to make some fences to protect the building itself and protect any sort of things that are stored there from the doll sheep who will be curious and will want to investigate what's going on in there provided that you're not there to scare them off. So we created this and then what we did was we add a raised platform on the top of it and another build that I have yet to release but I have talked about before I made a like New York style apartment building with a fire escape using some grates as stairs and I decided that I would use that same grate here we are as a step going up to the second level we then used more Asian planks to create the second floor of this and this was just kind of an overlook so we end up putting a little chair on here we finish it off and add a little bit more fencing on there just to create a little bit of a barrier to protect anyone who happens to go up there and then we put a little deck chair on i was going to make it go a little bit further up to create kind of like a little radio tower of some description there but i think that's something i will do as part of another build or maybe just a little bit of fluff to add a little bit extra decoration somewhere else in the park so this just ended up being a storage kind of facility with a little bit of an extra bit of decoration on the top so that anyone who is up here doing research can sit at the end of their day, have some food, have a beer or whatever, and just watch over the horizon as the sun goes down. And it was just nice to create this little vista point uh, that isn't for guests, but you would imagine that any staff or anyone who pays to come in and do that research or take photographs of these animals in their natural habitats can come up here spend a great deal of time here and then chill out at the end of a day and it's all about making these areas look like living breathing locations as just as opposed to just like a static object that is a little bit lifeless one of the things that i really like doing with my builds is telling stories i think that's what's important about making these sort of creative games is you, you want your builds to tell a story and i really really i'm keen to explore that in a little bit more detail uh so we have these little scenes with like items and things that would give a little nod to some of the things that might be going on that the game doesn't actually have the mechanics integrated in there to be able to tell that story for us we can tell it using props and stuff and and this was just something really fun to play with that was a bit of dead space that i thought if i don't put something on here it's going to look really unnatural so here we are watching it all build again this empty vacant space and we have put a few toys up here and a few scratching posts for the doll sheep if they do get inquisitive and start coming up to have a little investigate and I just thought it was a really nice feature to add. We also lit up that pathway with some of the, the festive bauble lights, which actually feature throughout this build because they're really soft and I, I like them. 
The last thing to do before we finish off this build is put in our barrier around the back of the build and because I'd done something really quite over the top for the rest of the build I decided to just put in some simple fencing here. I didn't want everything to be eye catching around the build and also I feel like we've done quite a lot and it has been a it's maybe a slightly overwhelming episode for what's been done and what's been covered in it so it would be probably a better idea to just finish everything off so we're going to skip through that see us putting in that and then right up to the top can you hear the music I think we're approaching our tour as we finish off this fencing we put in our little airlock for staff it doesn't have a gate on yet but I am going to add that in and then putting in our education board so here we are everything in action now guests are pretty awed by everything they see here because of how highly decorated everything is and the increase in the rating of the decoration see there's no doll sheep there but they're still staring in <laughs> we may need to add some vista points just to drive that traffic all the way around so that there's that area where they can look at and actually there's not a great deal of viewing space for guests there's just one tiny little corner and if you're on the funicular you get to see a little bit more that was the little uh, barn we built really simple there wasn't much in there over to the collapsed mine here I did end up putting a little lantern in there just to light it up from the inside and there is a webcam there too that I may try and link up to a notice board at some point if that's even possible I haven't actually explored that yet so we'll find out soon enough I guess the waterfall in full effect as the funicular drives past, looking incredible. And up here, imagine that view. Ah, wow. <laughs> I don't always say, well, actually I have for the last few episodes, I've been saying how impressed I am with myself, but I really like this. I, And especially when you add a little bit of a story to something, it feels so much more kind of, you feel that connection to it. Up here, you can see our little watering hole that's lit up. Hopefully we will see there isn't one coming. Never mind. And we're going to do a little sweep through here because I want to show you this area that we built that we haven't actually covered a lot of. So here we go. We're following some staff going up through here into that little mine all the way around into our staff facility. And through out of the other entrance, we come to our Japanese macaque habitat where everything's going pretty well. Spinning around, we'll take one little look at the funicular station as we fly on by and then you can see that habitat lit up at night the doll sheep with someone already sat in a tent having taken a load of photos of them in the natural habitat we obviously need to put a little bit more lighting in down here because it's very dark and there's not a lot going on down past the cabins which you can imagine staying in after a long day of exploring in the zoo with a lot of walking unless you forked up what is now an extortionate price tag for the funicular because the queues are mental <laughs> Past and through here into our reindeer habitat where we do have a little bit of a crime spree going on and need to hire some more security. Down into our original area where it all began. The exhibits, the information kiosk which now does not have anywhere near as much people traffic as it used to because everything's being spread out. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this build and I will see you for the next one. Take care of yourselves. Bye bye.